Let's get to atoning for our sins which are not unto death. Leviticus 23 and 26, what does it mean to fast? You can find that in Jonah chapter 3. Let's go in Jonah chapter 3. He wants us to teach the gospel, teach the laws to the people. Go ahead. Because the fast is now already passed. So what was Paul and them doing? They were fasting. So if you let an idiot, I'm going to say it again. If you let an idiot whisper in your ear, Romans 5, 11 teaches you not to fast. And you are that gullible to fall for. Shame on you. You deserve to die. Today's lesson, we're going to deal with uh, atonement. Preparing to atone. As many of you know, this Tuesday evening coming begins the day of atonement. Uh, 1 John 2.19 1 John 2 verse 19 They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Now, you have opportunity, like I always tell you brothers, you're not here to be professional students. Our prayer to the Lord is that you brothers come to a point where you're able to establish schools and congregations on your own in the spirit of Christ. Okay? From there, let's go to atoning for our sins. Because there's no sin that great, except one. There is, let me get to that sin. Give me Hebrews 6. Hebrews 6 and 4, please. Hebrews 6 verse 4. This is what the Spirit of Christ said through Paul. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come that they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. They put him to an open shame. Paul said, it is impossible. Impossible. So be mindful of that. So you frail-minded brothers and sisters that want to hook up with a camp that rejects Christ, you are treading on thin ground. What we read, read that verse again, verse 4. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. You learn the truth through Christ. Okay, go ahead. And have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. Your life changed. Go ahead. If they shall fall away. You fell away from the Savior. Go ahead. To renew them again unto repentance. You cannot renew that brother or sister again to repentance. Go ahead. Seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh. So it's as if they put Christ to the cross again. Go ahead. And put him to an open shame. And they put the Son of God to an open shame. Because at one time they believed on him and taught about him. Now they put him to an open shame. The Bible says it is impossible to renew them. In verse 4 when it says, and have tasted of the heavenly gift. What is that talking about? Ezekiel. Let's keep in context of everything that we read here because this whole passage that we read explains it. But I want to see if y'all pick up on the words that he's using there. Because the doctrine that we were talking about earlier is about what these people read in Isaiah and got that all wrong. Okay, read. It says, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened. Enlightened to what? Enlightened to the truth. The truth is, yeah. The heavenly gift is that Christ died for our sins. That's it. Everything else is correct, but that's the main piece. That Christ died and we became partakers. That's what it's talking about. Exactly. So when you leave up out of this truth and reject Christ, there's a heavy penalty for you. There's nothing but death for you. They're looking at me strange. They're looking at me strange. I, I can't let it go yet. They're looking at me strange, but read verse 6 so you can find out exactly that's what it's talking about. Look at verse 6. Verse 6. If they shall fall away, to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh, 
and put him to an open shame. Meaning that you counted his death for us as nothing. The, the heavenly gift was him, because we, by right, we were supposed to, that was supposed to be it. Sure. When he came and died for our sins this time, that gave, that's the gift that he gave us the chance to get the kingdom. So everything that y'all was saying was correct about the kingdom and everything else, but the gift was him laying his life down for us to get it. So you're going to have these niggas that's going to come up in the past talking about some crisis don't exist. Them niggas need death. Right. Okay, that's the heavenly gift that he's talking about. He, he gave us the chance to get the kingdom. And then you're going to treat that like garbage. That's the reason why the both sides said there remains no more sacrifice for sins. Right. Elder, can I add something? Mm -hmm. um, could you give me Acts chapter 2 verse 38? Acts 2 verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So, this is exactly what Yahweh was trying to make clear. Okay? A lot of you think that y'all just gonna leave, y'all gonna get upset because 99 times out of 100 when brothers leave, it's because there's conflict in the law that's being brought out to them. So they're upset, they catch attitudes, and where do they go? To another camp that lets them do whatever they want. So read it again. Then Peter said unto them, Repent. That's what we're telling y'all when y'all come through the door. Repent. Get yourself together. It's not good enough that you're saying I'm, I'm an Israelite because when the Most High put the curse on us, we knew we were Israelites. Yes or no? Yes. Okay? Read on. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. So now we're teaching you to repent in the name of Jesus Christ. Not repent in the name of I'm an Israelite on the street screaming at people telling them the white man is the devil. Because some of you are content with just that. That's, that's enough for you. Y'all pick any camp that's doing that. That's not what's going on here. Read on. For the remission of sins. For the remission of sins. Read on. And ye shall receive the gift. And now you're going to get a gift. Read on. Of the Holy Ghost. Of the Holy Ghost. What do we expound upon? What's the precept for the Holy Ghost? Acts 7 verse um, 51 Which is what? Um, Lord. Okay, so This sums up everything that we were trying to say The reason why I decided to be with Israel United in Christ And not every rinky dink fly by night Israelite camp that set up on the corner Was because the law was being taught and enforced here So that's what separates the saved from the sinners I got the gift of the Holy Ghost here. One thing about the elder, he expounded upon the law. For years I knew I was an Israelite, but I was no different from the other Israelite caps that were set up that were speaking nonsense. But what you see different here is the law, marriage, trust code, dietary law, application of the Sabbath. Y'all don't see that in no place else. So that's why we say if you want to go, go. A gift has been given to you. Remission of sins and the gift of the Holy Ghost and the faith of Christ. Exactly. So, like we read in Hebrews 6 and 4. If you leave from Christ, you reject Christ, it's impossible to renew you. Here's more proof. Go to Matthew 12, 31. Matthew 12, 31. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. So, all manner of sin. So, a brother curses me out. He can be forgiven. She can be forgiven. A brother or sister does something to you, they can still be forgiven. It says all manner of sin and blasphemy can be, shall be forgiven unto men. Go ahead. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost, you reject the Savior, Jesus the Christ, shall not be forgiven unto men. You will not be forgiven for that. Ever. Ever. You will not be forgiven. Right. You're no different from Esau when they said that he cried, he cried bitterly, but there remained no repentance for sins. Yes, right. Exactly. Go to first. Vote with him. Go to First John five sixteen. Here's another one. I hope y'all write this down because there's one sin you will not be forgiven for. That's when you reject Christ. First John five verse sixteen. If any man see his brother sin a sin, which is not unto death, he shall ask. And he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. So what sin is that is he's talking about? Zephaniah, what sin is that? I'm off. What sin is that? 
Azariah, what sin is that? That's what he's talking about. When you reject Christ, he says, don't pray for that brother. Don't pray for that sister. Leave them be. Don't pray for that. Read it again. If any man see his brother sin a sin, which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him light for them that sin not unto death. Let's say somebody tries to get stupid and say, well, let's talk about adultery. Can a brother or sister be forgiven for that? Yes. yes, because Christ said all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. Go ahead. Uh, if any man see his brother sin a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. That's blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. That's Hebrews 6 and 4. It is impossible to renew those who were once enlightened. That's what that's talking about. So now, Let's get to atoning for our sins which are not unto death. Leviticus 23 and 26, because the day of atonement comes Tuesday evening. Okay, Tuesday evening. And I need all you brothers and sisters to learn how to count the high holy days. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, also on the 10th day of the seventh month. The 10th day of the seventh month. September is Latin for what? Seven. seven. Go ahead. Also on the tenth day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. There shall be a day of atonement. It shall be an holy convocation unto you. It shall be an holy convocation unto you. Go ahead. And ye shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. So it says the tenth day of the seventh month. Keep that in mind. Tenth day of the seventh month, there shall be a holy convocation. Go ahead. It shall be an holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls, and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And ye shall do no work in that same day. For it is a day of atonement, to make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. For whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, shall, he shall be cut off from among his people. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, the same soul will I destroy it from among his people. He shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, and ye shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month at even, from even unto even, shall ye celebrate your Sabbath. So it begins when, Isaac? From evening to evening. No, no, I gave a number on the, on the tenth day. Read it again, I thought he's not listening. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, and ye shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month. At even So the ninth day at evening. The ninth day at evening begins the tenth day. Because the tenth day, remember that in Genesis it says, how did the days go? The evening and the morning. What scripture proves afflicting your soul means fasting? I only see one, two, three hands up. Zephaniah. Um, Jonah. No. Uh, Leon. No. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Say it again. Isaiah 58 and 5. Isaiah 58. Let's go there. I'm just so annoyed. Y'all bear with me. Isaiah 58. Read verse 3. Isaiah 58 verse 3. Listen good. Wherefore have we fasted? Wherefore have we fasted? Good. Say they. And thou seest not. Wherefore have we afflicted our soul? See that? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul? So fasting means to afflict your soul. So now the next question is, what does it mean to fast? I only see two hands now. Three. Joel. You can find that in Jonah, chapter 3. Let's go there. Jonah, chapter 3. Verse 4. Jonah 3, verse 7. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn everyone from his evil way, 
and from the violence that is in their hands. Right. Was there another one you had in there in Jonah? No, that's his first five seconds of fast. Okay. Uh, read verse five. Verse five. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast. So that's what you want to highlight, a fast. Now to explain what a fast is, is verse 7 and 8. Read it again. Verse 7. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the, by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. We cannot taste anything. Yes, that means you cannot brush your teeth. You cannot taste toothpaste. You cannot chew gum. My breath. My breath. Yeah. Or oh, bite your nails. No, that's see, that's a liberal. That's a liberal. That's a liberal. Because the liberal will bite his nails on the day of atonement and get put to death right in the middle of everybody. And then they deserve them right. Everybody ain't doing that though. That's exactly what needs to happen. Read that again, oh gosh. <laughs> Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. Nor drink water. So that's the day. Now, some of you sisters have children. You want to ask, well, when is it an opportune time for my child to do that? And some of you have medical conditions. If you have a medical condition and you know that there's medication, I'm going to just tell you. If you have to take medication, you got heart problems, whatever, take your medicine. You go to your doctor, but I do not want to hear that we told you not to. Actually, let me rephrase that. I'll, but scratch what I say. That's on you. You make your own decision. I'll say it that way. You make your own decision. But the scriptures do tell us not to taste anything. I word it like that. And, I'll leave it like that. And Elder, we yeah. gotta stress that because we know in the world, a lot of you have many different concepts of what a fast is. I've heard people say that there's a fruit fast, there's a fast where you just drink water, there's a fast where you just eat nuts. Ain't no type of them kind of fast in the Bible. When you fast, it's from sundown to sundown, nothing goes into your mouth. There's no other type. Y'all find another type of fast. Please bring the scriptures forward and show them to me. There is no other type of fast that the Most High will find acceptable. Yeah, there is one. The imagination of men. Right. There is one. The imagination of well, Christian fast. Yeah, yeah. There was an urban one in Ezra's. But right. we're reading here about not eating anything or drinking. Uh, just, this is what Paul said regarding this truth. Philippians 2 verse 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So that's what Paul said, work out your own soul salvation with fear and trembling. And when you fast, you gotta prepare for your fast. Don't eat dry foods all day, then wanna fast. That's simple as hell. You want foods with a lot of liquid in it. You got oranges, you got uh, cantaloupes, you got watermelons, those type of things that will get you through. You eat it that entire day until the evening, and that will hold you over. Any of y'all see camels? How they drink and eat a lot of food, and it stores in the fat, and they go for long times without eating or drinking? You gotta consider that, yes. And I was going to say, you got to prepare for it a few days before. So y'all should start drinking your water and stuff now. Don't think your body's going to be able to uptake all that hydration in one day. So use wisdom and start prepping. Start, start alternating your diet now. Especially for those of y'all who is your first fast. All right? You got to build yourself up to that. Some of us who are experienced, we could probably just do it on a dime and it's not, it's not a big deal. But a lot of you who are not experienced with that, start drinking your water now. Get your eight glasses in every day up until, you know, you get that fasting. Also, um, one to two days before the fast, stay away from as much meat as possible. Where y'all get that fuck breath is from red meat. So try to eat chickens, fish, and the day before try to eat a lot of fruits and grains, a lot of water, because um, that fruit and grain will help you help you take in the water. Things, things like fruit are heavy in fiber. That'll help hold the water in your system and you won't urinate it out too much. 
Exactly. That's why we had to we have to fast once a month. I mean, our own personal fast between us and the Lord. So many of y'all should be experienced. Who's done it before? Who's fasted? All right. So this shouldn't be not, nothing new for y'all. Uh, some of the people online might be that some of their first time, and some of y'all some of y'all can go without a few meals. I'll leave it like that. Um, when we say go, go to Isaiah 50. No, go to 1 Corinthians 7 and 5. When you're fasting before the Lord, you cannot have sex. Paul explains that in 1 Corinthians 7 and 5. It's amazing that the elder just said that. He said some of us can go, some of us can use a few missed meals. <laughs> No, I just have you touch something, man. Because if you go, because huh? <laughs> if you if you look at some of our people that's living in this in these dire con, con, these dire places that they, that they don't get to eat hardly at all, and, and they go on like days without eating. Right. There's places like Haiti and Jamaica yeah. where they yeah. stop giving water at a certain time. Some of y'all don't know about, nothing about that. We talking about we hungry. We get stuff 24-7 in this country of battle. Our people in America don't know what hunger is. I don't, I, I'm going to just say it straight. You, you, our people, all we do is eat. Well, our people do not know anything about hunger. You ain't experienced no hunger. Like what you just said, they go to certain places where they just cut off the food completely at exactly. a certain time of day. You ain't seen We went that. to Dagon Trinidad teaching. We stopped teaching 10 o'clock at night. We looking for food shops. Yeah. They all closed down. All closed down. I was mad as hell. And they're they looking at you like, what's the matter? Yeah. They used to it. You be like, <laughs> I'm, I'm starving. Exactly. That's how it was. I'm mad as hell. First Corinthians 7 verse 5. Defraud ye not one the other. The scripture says, defraud ye not one the other. Paul is talking about husband and wives having sex. Read it again. Defraud ye not one the other. Don't withhold sex one from the other. Don't play those games. Women, don't play those sex games. You don't do what I want, you ain't getting none. Because that's how some wicked women do. Read it again. Defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for a time. Except it be with consent. Except you both, husband and wife, are in agreement for a time. Go ahead. That you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer. See that? That you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer. Watch this. And come together again. And then, after you fasted and pray, come together again sexually. Go ahead. That Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. For your incontinency, incontinency. meaning lack of self-control. Okay, because guess what? Black men and Latin men, guess what we love to have? Sex! It says if you decide, read that bottom precept again. And that Satan tempt you not for and, your... And that Satan tempt you not... For your incontinency. For your lack of control. That's why he says come together again. So you sister that like to play games, then you want to know, he's on the internet chatting with somebody. I'll leave that for another class. She, she's playing games. She's playing games with the sex because her mama told her that she was sitting on a million dollars. Hey, that's and the that's, reason why she's doing that. That's I, how you're supposed to be able to make that man do anything. You got you. <laughs> that's that's how they teach you. Some of them. I thought read it again. <laughs> Before you not one the other. It says not to withhold sex from each other. Okay, because you got men. That would hold sex from the woman also. Yeah. Where? That's why he said, Where? Which one of you brothers do that? <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. I don't know. 